All right, so we've seen how to style particular tags, and as we've seen, it's sort of a universal thing, right? All of my paragraphs look the same way. All of my H1s, all of my H2s look the same way. And that's great. It really came out very nice for us, and it worked well for what we needed to do. However, what if there are certain paragraphs that you want to have that look different than other paragraphs? Well, in other words, here our P, our selector, is styling every single paragraph to look a certain way. Well, what if I wanted one of these paragraphs to look different? For example, what if I wanted to create an area that I wanted to define as a custom class so that we can make it look more like a quotation in our particular file? Well, we can do this by creating custom classes. And here's how we do it. In the CSS code, we can choose a new CSS rule. And look here, it says custom class, right? Class, you can apply this to any HTML element. So in other words, any HTML element can be turned into a particular element that would take this custom class. So how do we choose a name for our selector? Well, you always start it with a period, a little dot first. And when you have that dot, then you give it any name that you want. Just make up anything. Now look, if I wanted something that looks like a specialized quotation, I could just call it quotation. So just remember that it has to have a dot first. And it's going to be defined in the external CSS file. So we'll click OK. And don't worry about previewing this because we're not going to be able to see a preview until we apply this particular custom class and I'll talk to you about that in just a second. So look we said Verdana was the original font for the paragraphs. Let's choose something that looks you know completely different just because you know I want to show you the differences here. So Verdana is a sans serif. Let's choose something that is a serif font. right? So we have a lot of serif available got this one here, we've got Palatino as a serif, among others, right? We even have MS Serif or New York, among others as well. But let's choose Georgia, Times New Roman, it's perfectly fine. Now I want my text to be smaller than my other text, so what if we said uh, 11 pixels? And the font height, instead of 18, maybe I'll make it a little tighter, like uh, 16. And you could even choose a different color. We could even choose a background color. But we'll get to that in a second. Let's just do this. We'll, uh, we'll click OK. Nothing happens. Why? Because in order to apply this dot quotation custom class, and as you can see in the code, that's what it looks like. Dot quotation is the name of the selector. And there's the same property and values and stuff like that. So let's go back to our source code. In order to apply quotation to a specific paragraph or something like it, what we can do is this. We can select a particular paragraph, as I'm doing here. Notice what's happening in the code view. Just, you know, P for paragraph, nothing else. Well, inside my property window down here, I can choose a class to apply to it. So if I click down on this, before we didn't have anything here except none. Now we've created a custom class and it happens to be available right here. So if we were to click on quotation, you would see that in your code it says class equals quotation. And let's look at it here. It's smaller, it also is tighter spaced than the other one, and it is in a different font. So we can make that look even more different. Now, since it's been applied to this particular paragraph, I'm going to just keep this paragraph visible right here because if we want to make changes at this point, we could just double click this and we could start applying some changes. For example, maybe the line height is a little too generous and maybe I could say 14 instead. Wow, you see how tight that becomes? Maybe I want the entire font to be italic too, just so that it looks even more different from the rest of it. We can even give any particular tag in CSS a background. We did a background color for the simple idea of working with our body, but note you can also give your background here, uh, your paragraph here, excuse me, a background color as well. And take a look. See, so that entire block, which is my paragraph, is now visible inside of this squared off area right here. So all of that's kind of cool too, and many different things that you can apply 
and work with in that specific fashion. Well, let's do a couple of other changes, among other things. Like, for example, we can also give a border to any of our elements. So here's my paragraph, and I could say, hey, you know what? I want this border to be applied. Okay, well, notice that there are little check marks, same for all. All right, well, let's try that first. We'll say, give me a solid border with a width of one pixel and a color of blue. Now, I should probably choose the blue that I'm using over there, but I can't pick it, so we'll come back to this later and change it. But if I were to apply that, check it out. The entire area now is blue. Well, at least the border around it is blue. That's cool, but if you didn't want to have a border that was uniformly the same size, well, check this out, right? Maybe solid the whole way through, but let's vary the width. Maybe on the top and the bottom you like it at one pixel, but maybe on the right side and the left side you want them to be 10 pixel instead. Check this out. We can press apply and notice that, right? Now you have a very distinctly different area. The changes are really quite nice. And as you can note, as you can see here, if I wanted to, I could also play with the color value for those things as well. Anyways, I'm going to remove these values. Maybe I don't want to have a border on this. See that? I'm just take them all away. And perhaps we'll work with the background color a little bit later. But right now, if I were to remove this and just leave it as it is right now and click OK, you can see that we have this custom class applied, this quotation. So if I preview this in the browser, you people are probably working at home something a lot larger screen than I have, but check it out, right? I've got this particular paragraph looking decidedly different from all the other ones. And it's something that can be applied multiple times on the page. For example, let's say I wanted to create a second paragraph right here. So I'll just press return, separating that line. And if I were to select this area, and if I wanted to apply a custom class to it, make it a quotation as well, well, I could leave it like this, but then I could just say quotation and check it out, right? It also looks like the one underneath it. And if we look at our code, P class equals quotation. So that's just showing us how we can work with these different elements and make them work for us. Now, I don't necessarily need this to be my quotation. So if I want to remove it, just say none. And if I want this to be one full paragraph again, just delete that. And it goes right inside of its area as we saw before. All right, so when we come back, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to create another custom class, but we're going to use it with images. And I'll show you exactly how we'll do that when we do come back.